Right now we are losing a football field worth of wetlands every hour. My daddy says the oil field started it and Mother Nature's finishing it. When I was a kid, you had to worry about alligators. Now we gotta worry about sharks. <laughs> In 2005, the worst hurricane in U.S. history caught Louisiana by surprise. The coastal flooding caused by Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans, leaving more than 1,800 people dead and displacing hundreds of thousands. The Superdome, one of the largest sports arenas in America, became a symbol of the storm's unexpected impact. With nowhere else to go, more than 30,000 people sought shelter under its roof. Today. It's a very different scene inside the stadium. Walk 685, Echo Patrol America Inc. $2,802,003. Oil and gas companies like BP, BHP Billiton, and Anadarko have gathered at this slow paced auction to compete for rights to engage in offshore exploration in the Gulf of Mexico. This is a map of the entire um, area that's been part of the bidding system. So everything that's green are the active leases that were issued. The red ones here are the ones that are part of the bid today. This is nothing new. Since the 1930s, the industry has been tearing through the coastal wetlands of Louisiana as part of their search for oil in the Gulf, shredding the marshes that serve as a natural barrier against major storms like Hurricane Katrina. Despite making Louisiana more vulnerable to future storms, the industry continues to pour billions of dollars into exploring and developing new areas to extract even more oil and gas. After the auction, we tried to get some of the company reps to talk, but not surprisingly, they declined. So nobody can comment no. about what's going on? No. Finally, the head of the industry's trade group agreed to speak with us about the connection between oil and gas exploration and the deterioration of wetlands, but was quick to lay the blame elsewhere. At least a lot of the studies that I see don't put that high of a percentage of loss of land to the oil and gas industry, that it's actually due to the Mississippi being constrained in, to one place where it can no longer you know, empty the silt and the water. Flooding from the Mississippi River used to be the area's biggest problem, at least back in 1927, before the Army Corps of Engineers came in and built a levee to keep it in place. While it's true the levee did cut off the natural lifeline of sediment to the wetlands, it plays a minor role in coastal erosion here, its absence leading to less than a quarter inch of land loss every year. On the other hand, oil and gas companies have been dredging canals through these parts since the 1930s, permanently damaging Louisiana's first line of defense against major storms. Wetlands absorb much of the impact when a storm makes landfall, slowing its momentum before reaching communities further inland. So less wetlands means storms are able to cause more damage. Right now we are losing a football field worth of wetlands every hour. Jonathan Henderson monitors oil and gas activity in the wetlands for the Gulf Restoration Network. He showed us just how damaging industry activity has been to the region. This is ground zero for, for where drilling started in Louisiana. Everything that you see here that is open water was once just solid wetlands. In the search for oil and gas, canals were carved through the wetlands, mainlining salt water straight into freshwater marshes killing everything in its path. This has caused Louisiana to lose more land faster than any other place in the world. If you go up in the air, you can see that this is the clearest example of an oil field in wetlands because there's so many oil and gas canals. Jonathan offered to take us up to get a better view of how the 10,000 miles of canals have eaten away at the marsh. As we flew further out, we spotted dozens of offshore facilities. You can see all these wells that are out there in the water. Oh, yeah. Those all had to be built, right? And so they had to dredge to get in 
there and then lay pipelines to connect them. Even with a glut in the global supply of oil and prices at their lowest rates in years, the offshore industry is still going strong. That's in part because energy companies are playing a long game in the hopes that what goes down must go up, investing in projects that will run for decades to come. The area is expected to produce a record 1.9 million barrels a day starting next year, which means even more oil and gas being extracted and pumped from the Gulf of Mexico back on shore through pipelines running through the wetlands. We're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot by uh, supporting an industry that's actually leading to our own demise. Right? We, the more oil and gas that's produced in Louisiana, it's going to be even more difficult for us to, to save our coast and save our communities. 